I want to take two or three pieces of news that all broke in the last 24 hours in the tech space in AI. And I want to put them together in the context of a larger frame around where AI is going. So the frame here is the Sequoia paper that came out that talks about the fact that we're moving into a world where we're no longer looking just at the pure software market, which could be valued at maybe half a trillion dollars. But we're actually looking at a $10 trillion software and services market as addressable if we factor in AI because AI is so effective at services. So basically, if you look at like, where do people get the money back on these investments, it's they're, them thinking they have this pie that's grown much, much larger, and it's now a $10 trillion pie to play with rather than a half a trillion dollar pie to play with. All of these are very large numbers. But when you're looking at investing as much as people are investing in AI, the larger number does matter because you do have to get that ROI back. Okay, with that context and that frame, what developments matter over the last couple of days? Number one, you will be surprised by this, but number one is a boring business, so, so to speak, that is not necessarily directly AI related, but will tie into AI over the next 12 months. That is Stripe's acquisition of Bridge. So Stripe bought Bridge for a rumored $1.1 billion. And Stripe, of course, is in the payment space. Bridge is also in the payment space, but it's in crypto and it's in stable coins and providing APIs for stable coins specifically. The reason why this is interesting is because this is a classic example of a, what I would call a Stripe type acquisition where it makes a lot of financial sense. There's a very hard use case in ROI, and that's not typical for crypto. And it's really interesting to be in a world where if you're looking at the range of news, crypto is the thing with the stable use case and the boring business case, and it's the AI stuff that's more speculative. And in this situation, what Stripe is looking to do is essentially to undercut the power that the card monopolies have. So Visa, MasterCard, they're charging Stripe for handling payments. And it is non-trivial at Stripe's volume. Stripe handles over a trillion dollars in transactions every year. And so if you're paying one to 3% on that, that really adds up. And so what Bridge does is it provides you the option to start to move some of that payment volume to stable coins which in turn gives you a frictionless payment method that unlocks a lot of really interesting use cases. Yes, including potentially AI use cases. So for example, the underlying unit economics of card volume make it hard to do micro payments. And one of the real challenges on the web is that we have sort of a lower limit around $5 where it doesn't make sense to charge less than that, except in really extraordinary circumstances. And that's why games will often charge you in smaller increments, but not really charge your wallet. And they'll, you'll just recharge your wallet periodically. And so we don't really have a good you know, answer for micropayments. Bridge or something like Bridge is a way to handle that because it could be potentially re really frictionless to do micropayments. Another example, uh, just fundamentally is that you could do something like a wallet experience where you move your currency into stable coins with stripe you could pay on stripe as much as you want with zero transaction fees and stripe could pass those savings to you and stripe could then know you had the cash because like it's in the wallet in the account and the entire system would be sort of a closed loop with Stripe driving it. So there's there's like more margin for Stripe to capture there. There's savings to pass on to merchants, savings to pass on to customers ultimately. That was the really hard headed use case for Bridge. Uh, I noticed they have API documents, et cetera. And that's very Stripe-like. I'm really curious to see where this goes because Stripe has definitely been very hard headed when it comes to how they handle payments. And so if they're buying this, they clearly see a use case that they're gonna go somewhere with. That's the boring news. Here's the, the more speculative news and how this relates to this larger $10 trillion software frame. So we have two examples of agentic reasoning and agentic search and agentic use cases for AI. And just to remind you, like agentic means like essentially the AI is driving the computer for you. The AI will do a task independently and come back and you don't have to tell it what to do every single time, right? You don't have to give it micro tasks and micro micro work along the way to accomplish a larger task. Release one is Anthropic actually releasing a larger 
SEO search agent experience. And by larger, I don't mean that it's like bigger on the screen. I mean that it's more in depth. I mean that you can give the agent more to do. And that is not coincidentally tied to the release of Claude 3.5, which is the other major release that I'm going to talk about. So Claude 3.5 is specifically trained on agentic use cases. And they actually released that as a bench and they talked about how much better the new 3.5 Sonnet is than the existing one at agentic use cases. And when you think about it, what Claude is trying to do from a sort of strategic perspective is unlock agentic use cases for developers. And so what they highlighted was, you know, Replit using uh, the new Claude agent for computer use to do UAT, et cetera. But what people's imagination got caught by, it wasn't necessarily developers. It was actually consumer use cases that I saw. I saw someone order lunch with their Claude agent just yesterday. Now, it was hard because Claude doesn't really want you to do that. They don't want the agent making purchases. There's obviously big liabilities there. Imagine the agent racking up thousands at like a luxury store without your consent, et cetera. It could be a real problem. But the idea of an agent that drives your screen and uses your screen as an API to see the world, that's something that has consumer implications as well. Now, this is very token heavy. So like, it's like 2 billion and change tokens for 15, 20 minutes of, of screen time. You do have to bail it out. It gets stuck in a ditch a lot. I joked yesterday about how distractible it is. It is definitely distractible. Um, but the point is, like, this is one of those situations where if you walk back to Stripe and Bridge, Stripe and Bridge, like the crypto use case, it's actually very hard headed in Stripe's case. Whereas with Anthropic, it's clearly in experimental mode. They said it's an experimental mode. It is a technology looking for use cases. And we have guesses at what those use cases would be, but we're going to have to discover them. And perplexity is taking that same underlying technology and working it into the perplexity search and actually making it useful for extended search queries so it can independently, the agent independently surfs the web for you and answers your query. And it's already wrapped into Perplexity Pro. So if you're a Perplexity Pro user, you already have it. And what I find interesting is, is that in this situation, the technology is finding use cases within existing pieces of AI software faster because they're more narrowly defined. And so perplexity just has to handle search. They don't have to handle a mouse moving around your screen. They don't have to handle keyboard inputs. It's just a search agent. And that limitation, that like lockdown of what the scope of the agent can do makes it more useful. And I am wondering, as we look back at this like Sequoia $10 trillion play, if essentially what we're gonna see is three different kinds of plays. We're gonna see infra plays, where you have folks like Stripe or Bridge that are innovating on infrastructure to enable the kind of underlying payments software infrastructure that you need to have an AI economy. And I think that Bridge fits into that. Like you will need micro payments to make AI work well because you have a lot of micro interactions. And then on top of that, you're going to have very defined and narrow use case innovation. And that's really the perplexity space. Like we do search, that is what we do. And I think that is also coming soon because I think you have immediate applications for that core innovation. And then at the very end of the, of the value chain, you have this sort of core speculative innovation that's coming from the core big four or five language model shops. And Anthropic is one of them. And when they do things like release a general purpose computer user experiment, it's going to be a bit before we figure out exactly how to use that. I think it's coming. I think it's probably coming sometime. We'll, we'll see some usefulness uh, and some scaled application for it sometime next year in 2025. It is not something that I would say is close to ready for prime time today in October 2024. And I realize that saying that over a period of months makes me seem crazy because this is all moving so fast. And like you fast forward six months and normally you're, you're used to seeing like gradual progress because that's what we've had. It will feel much faster than that. But still, it is very speculative today. It is very speculative today. So if I wrap all of that back to the Sequoia frame and kind of where we started out, ultimately, what will capture the services market, that $10 trillion market that Sequoia is painting a picture of, 
is specific use cases that enable people to solve their problems dramatically faster. I actually think perplexity is positioned really well here. I think Stripe is positioned well just to capture underlying uh, margin from payments volume. They're just moving into, into a place where they can solidify that position and solidify their scale over time. That's what the bridge acquisition was about. Um, and ultimately Anthropic is positioned as a utility. Anthropic is positioned as a utility that enables that scale by charging per token. And so really the key underlying factor for them to get more adoption of some of these technologies is to bring down the cost per token, which is exactly what we've seen them doing. I know this has been in depth at length and it's been a little bit of a strategic frame, but I like to step back and put the news in that perspective sometimes because I think it's really important so we don't lose our way. Hope you enjoyed it. Cheers.